Um, so, you know, this is uh, Maxine Dugan and uh, say your name, Domina oh, L. Domina L. <laughs> we are talking today on our YouTube channel, um, Dominate the Nation, about um, the recent laws that were passed by Congress that the president side, signed called FOISTA and SESTA. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Stop Online Sex Trafficking Act and the Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act uh, were signed by the um, the president. So, in a phenomenal act of unity by uh, 98 senators and uh, Congress and the president, they stripped everybody of their online free speech and their privacy. Congratulations! Yeah, so before um, the law was even signed by the president, we saw um, third-party online content holders like Craigslist take down their personal section, take down their, um, you know, their hookup section. We saw a bunch of other adult advertising sections um, be taken down because what this law does is it strips a 30-year-old law that protected websites from third-party content that they would not be held criminally or civilly liable. So this this change in the law makes them criminally and civilly liable um, around anybody who turns out to be involved in forced labor in the sex industry. Um, so yeah, take uh, talk about throw the baby out with the bathwater. In this case, they threw the whole house out with the bathwater. <laughs> so um, it's gonna it leaves a whole bunch of us. Uh, with no access to advertise. Um, I don't know how you're experiencing it on your end, Elle, but uh, yeah. Yeah, quite a few of the listing sites that I have used are down. Um, I feel like I'm in a better position at this point than many people because of, you know, I have other means of uh, doing what I do, but uh, I, I'm w- just waiting for them to go down too. And in which case, I don't know what I'm going to do. So. Right. Right. So the loss of space means that, you know, a bunch of people who were doing a full range of erotic services, everything from, you know, uh, advertising to, you know, speak with somebody over the phone or over the Internet in exchange for money or about adult adult things. Um, You know, uh, it's just it's just all, you know, coming down because everybody is afraid of being um, charged uh, criminally uh, for facilitating with something that they have no knowledge of. Um, you know, I heard that, you know, maybe some of the groups like the ACLU or um, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, you know, might be looking for a way to injunct this law. There's a question about when this law comes into effect. It could be another you know, 90 days from the time that the president signed it, that it actually comes into law. Um, because the law does a bunch of really janky things, like it makes uh, web uh, hosters or websites uh, responsible for content uh, that was hosted on their website prior to the law being passed, mm-hmm. uh, which is really wacky. So there could be a whole range of ways to people to injunct certain parts of the law, I wish that we had some money to be able to injunct, you know, the part of the law that names us specifically because, um, you know, we feel like it singles us out and it's a form of discrimination in barring our First Amendment, you know, speech and that, um, you know, that we should have that, um, you know, because prostitution is not criminalized on the federal level. So what they're trying to do is criminalize all the activities around prostitution and, um, you know, we see that go on at the state-by-state state level where prostitution is criminalized. And, you know, this bad law even affects legally working uh, Nevada brothel workers. Certainly they have a dog in the game and should be, um, you know, able to, you know, file an injunction uh, against this bad law. So, you know, um, there's just a lot that... Uh, that we need to be able to do about the loss of space, the loss of advertising space, the loss of space to be able to screen customers, the loss of space for customers to be able to screen us and find out that, you know, that we're, you know, viable, credible providers. You know, it's going to set up a scenario where, you know, customers and providers alike are going to be taking chances on unknowns. 
and you know, uh, opening up um, the possibility of violence, of theft, um, and we don't want to see that. You know, that's not within the public's best interest to have you know that go on. Mm. I don't know, Elle, do you want to talk about, like, the media's coverage? <laughs> well, real quick, would you mind, you know, when you say, too bad we don't have any money, you know, this is something that I've not heard anybody else mention, um, you know, what our community could be doing legally, specifically, to address this law. If we had the money, what could we do? Well, we could file an injunction um, at the federal level. Um, you know, uh, we could get a bunch of plaintiffs uh, who have a full range of um, erotic services that they're providing. Um, you know, I saw on Twitter a couple of days ago the um, woman who is an author who reviews um, lingerie and that, you know, her social media accounts were snagged. Hmm. And so, you know, because, uh, you know, Twitter and, um, you know, Google and, uh you know, Instagram, all these social medias are concerned now that they're going to be held civilly and criminally liable for anything around sex in general because they can't tell the difference between somebody who's a consensual person one second and, you know, somebody who's involved in forced labor the next minute. And that's been the problem with these uh, bad laws all along because they're all based upon criminalization of prostitution. Mm -hmm. Prostitution were not criminalized then, um, you know, there wouldn't be any question about who's involved in forced labor and who's not. People wouldn't be afraid to say, you know, uh, somebody tried to force me to do something. People wouldn't be afraid to say, hey, I saw, uh, you know, an ad or had an interaction with somebody who I felt was underaged and, you know, they were violating the terms of the uh, agreement and they shouldn't be in this chat room. Um, you know, it's not like we're going to call the police. Right, because of the, all the duplicitous laws that exist on the books. Mm -hmm. um, but the media has really fueled all this false and misleading information, uh, fueling all the talking points of the opposition. Things like, oh, we need another tool in the toolbox. <laughs> you know, these are fake tools, these are fake laws that are based on fake research. And, um, you know, the Prostitute Nation has done a really good job of discrediting, you know, that research long ago, but we see it continually to be recirculated and uh, that law, you know, that legislators continue to, you know, dismiss us uh, as, you know, we're just not, we're criminalized and we don't have access to equal protection under the law, so too bad they don't have to pay attention to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our voices don't matter. Yeah. And that's really what our lawsuit was all about, the one we filed in federal court against the state of California to injunct that prostitution law, because we were telling the court, we don't have access to equal protection under the law. We don't have access to legislators uh, to say, you know, we need some decriminalization of prostitution here. We need some access to equal protection, and the criminalization of prostitution bars that. So, you know, we can't... We can't get legislators to listen to us or to pay attention to us or, you know, to do anything for us, which is why we went to the court system. Mm -hmm. And the court said, well, you do have access. You know, the legislators can change the law um, and maybe they should change the law. But to, um, you know, pass like we're battling now this California Senate Bill 1204, which changes the pandering statute to say anybody who is encouraging anybody to uh, be a prostitute or act as a prostitute is guilty of a felony. So that expands this, um, you know, impairment on free speech. So even people like, you know, the, um, you know, the teachers that invite me to come to their college, you know, classes and talk about prostitution could be charged with this pandering mm -hmm. statute. Um, you know, wow. and, the pandering, and the pandering law, yeah, the pandering law in California comes with a mandatory registration on the sex offender list. So you won't even have put your hands on anybody and end up on the, as a sex offender on the sex offender registry list, which really dilutes the whole purpose of the sex offender registry list. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's supposed to be a tool of public safety, but mm, lo and behold, through these sex trafficking laws, they're turned, you know, these pimping and panning, pandering laws, they're turned into, you know, fake tools once again. Uh, you know, being sold to the public. 
you know, whose consent, you know, you and I have talked about this all where, you know, the consent of the public has been manufactured the whole way mm -hmm. that the, the consent of, you know, surrendering, uh, civil rights, civil, you know, your access to free speech, you know, either online or in other spaces has been greatly hindered, uh, with these anti sex trafficking laws and the public has just kind of gone along with it. Well, we need to protect, you know, these poor, you know, victims, um, but really what they're doing is, you know, like with the weapons of mass destruction conversation is they're selling out their own civil rights and their own civil liberties, and they're expanding the police state and expanding the surveillance state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's really what's, what's going to become more blatant. And I don't know about you, L, but I saw, you know, during this whole debacle last week, where um, the, uh, the the proponents of Foyster were saying they needed it to be able to you know go after groups like Backpage and here Backpage is seized by the government, but there were no actual charges of sex trafficking against Backpage. There were no minors involved. They were charged with promoting prostitution and with money laundering. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you know they didn't need Foyster and Sesta to go after Backpage. You know they mm -hmm. they just lied to the public and then. We have mainstream media saying, oh, the government seized Backpage for sex trafficking, you know, so that's just part of that false and misleading narrative that the opposition has been so good at, mm -hmm. and our side has not been good at it. Mm -hmm. You know, our side is, is still, like, you know, struggling to get a voice, you know, uh, struggling to get access to the media. Uh, sometimes when we get access to the, access to the media, we end up... Uh, rubber stamping or uh, mimicking the opposition's yes. language and their narrative against us. It's horrible. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you know when your your opposition is carrying your narratives that you've done a really good job. And that's, <laughs> you know, what uh, I see people in our community making that mistake. You know, uh, we were talking about that around the Me Too and Time's Up stuff. And sure enough, I mean, I don't know if you saw that article with Melissa Farley saying, oh, yes, the sex workers should be included in the Me Too movement because they're raped and their work is, you know, horrible for them. And I mean, wow, I was blown away. You know, I was like, oh, my God, Melissa Farley is agreeing with SWAP. And with uh, SARS and, and these so alleged sex worker rights organizations who were clowned by this. And then, you know, with the uh, one of the alleged uh, allies in our movement, not a sex worker, but uh, Kate over there in the documentary, I Am Jane Doe, which was used to pass SESTA. You know, she was clowned and her uh, talking points were absolutely used um, to, you know, help their narrative. So, you know, it would be awesome if for our community to get some training and understanding, not only around how you deal with the press, but what you do with the press and what you say when you are, I mean, there are ways to minimize the clowning, minimize how they take our words out of context. And, you know, you really have to have solid talking points and know what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, part of, um, you know, what was so stark to me, Elle, is, you know, here they had taken out, down Backpage, they had, the president had signed this law, and here is Mark Zuckerberg sitting there in Congress, you know, being made to, to be held to accounting for all the privacy violation um, on Facebook. And so, you know, Facebook, like Twitter, like Google, all those big, you know, um, internet conglomerates remove their opposition to these bad federal bills. And that's what helped them move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think that they removed their opposition because they knew they were going to be called in front of Congress, in front of the American public to be held accountable for uh, their uh, profiting off of people's privacy without their permission. And so I think they removed their opposition to passing this bill like as an olive branch to Congress hmm. so that Congress wouldn't go hard on them. And guess what? Those hearings, Congress didn't go hard on them. Hmm. And so in the meantime, you know, Facebook and, you know, Twitter and Google are stripping, you know, the prostitute nation, the sex worker nation, 
and even people associated uh, with our with sexual freedom of all of their content from the internet. Yeah, I think that's something else too, being able to see the bigger picture here and how things tie in. And um, I think many pieces of the puzzle are escaping the consciousness of uh, a lot of people in our movement. That this is, you know, this is about us, but it's about other things too, you know. It's about everybody's access to free speech. So one of the ways that, you know, we get the public, you know, to understand that selling out their own civil rights um, under the guise of saving us or saving some invisible people is is not what they want to be doing. It's ineffective, and they need to stop. Um, I think I only saw one person in the media over the last week who, you know, talked about decriminalization of prostitution. You know, nobody else in the media who was contacted by the media to talk about, you know, um, the effects of these bad laws on us, you know, talked about that. And, um, you know, it's just an opportunity, you know, to weaponize, you know, our talking points and our narrative because um, everybody is understanding that their access to free online speech has greatly been limited under the guise of rescuing us and they don't like it and they're like finally starting to wake up. And so it's a great opportunity for us to, um, you know, get our, get our talking points together <laughs> and to uh, start to move forward and push back against this false and misleading information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see every opportunity as a social and political currency in our movement is so extremely limited, uh, you know, a funding and everything is so precious, extremely precious. And um, I was analyzing talking points, analyzing all the different uh, articles and reports and it was almost like a cl each one was a clone of the same thing. It was just different different sex workers talking about their personal, you know, what's going on with them after SESTA, FOSTA. And, you know, we, we really need to use these opportunities to push forth our asks, our, what we want and what we're demanding here. These are, it's a platform. And, and I think we've, we're getting more media now than I think we've ever gotten. And yet it's, it's a lot of it is just, being flushed down the toilet and you know what are we doing what are we doing I, I mean we all made mistakes I've made mistakes in the media oh my god I, you know oh, me but, too. but you got to learn you've got to really analyze the strategy here and if these strategies work and if they don't work and some of the things that we do want to say and that we feel you know it's it may be truth yes we feel it but it's not going to be effective when it comes to the political strategy that has to be engaged here in order to achieve the goal, which is decriminalization and access to our rights, uh, equal protection under the law, so that the real work can begin to do what we need to do around our industry and our individual freedoms in the industry. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, we have the Erotic Service Providers Union meeting coming up on April 30th. Uh, that's a Monday. It's going to be here in San Francisco at the San Francisco Labor Council, located at 1188 Franklin Street, uh, Suite uh, 203. Um, so uh, we're also going to try to get the access to the... Um, the phone, you know, the phone conference uh, components mm -hmm. to be able to get people across the state because we're being contacted by people from all over the state. There's a whole bunch of work that has to be done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking to the media, uh, being able to get some infrastructure together to affect um, some of these um, legislators. You know, because when I talk to legislators, and I know you've had this experience too, where they're gonna, they they support us. You know, they're like, yeah, criminalizing is dumb. You know, it's it doesn't work. It's ineffective. Uh, you know, but is anybody going to put their, uh, you know, political capital on the line to uh, put a stop to it? You know, that is a, is a question. And so, uh, you know, we're going to move forward with getting the case against the state filed at the state level uh, to in, injunct that prostitution law. And... Um, you know, there's just, there's a lot of work to do here, Elle. There's a lot, a lot of work to do. Absolutely. And not even enough people to do it. So <laughs> it'll yeah. be good to get people organized to, you know, make it happen. And we need yeah. funding, funding uh, to bring forth cases. And um, I think that's, 
you know, a huge priority, you know, at this point, I mean, it's always been a huge priority, but at this point more than ever, um, you know, we need to rally around and mobilize around any direct action of impact litigation to attempt to, I mean, open that door. It, it has to, it has to happen. It's what it's, it's going to help. It's going to happen. It's just, it's just really a matter of time and of political will. And, you know, when you have a workforce that's in chaos, uh, you know, struggling to survive because they've been criminalized systematically uh, for so long and, you know, to have additional, um, you know, impingement upon their freedom of speech um, with these bad laws, uh, you know, it's, it's a time to really gather around and fight back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's what mm -hmm. I want to do. <laughs> what we're doing and speaking of that <clears throat> thank everybody for you know joining in on us today you know you can like um our our youtube channel you can share it you can subscribe to it and um yeah, can i know. say something right, right there um yeah. you know when it comes to this is an example of something that really needs to happen you know, here we have, you know, there are different channels on YouTube that are sex worker based. The more people like and share and subscribe to the channels, you know, before uh, recently, you know, you, things were more monetized, which is really good. Uh, and, and had we gotten more support, we could have raised money that way through mm -hmm. our YouTube channel. At this point, you know, that's been greatly diminished because of the new terms of service with uh, YouTube. But even so, uh, I believe we can still attach uh, donation uh, feature to the channel. But to support the algorithm of any and all workers that are fighting this fight, it is so crucial. And with, you know, you have certain talking heads in the community. Um, frankly, it seems to me that they hog and try to dominate narratives and dominate the, narr the algorithm. And that works against all of us, everybody. And when you- Well, the people who do that, I mean, they're not actual workers. You know, they're not even actual workers. You no, know, a lot of them are not. Most of them are yeah. not. And so it brings into question, well, you know, why are you even talking about us? You know, why are you even talking about us in, you know, sir, you know in that uh, pejorative, um, a language that's used by the antis, um, you know, calling us survivors and, you know, trying to divide everybody around their, their race, their class, their, their statute. Um, it's, it's just not, um, it, it's just not helpful at this point. It's and it wasn't, strategy. Her, I don't think it was ever helpful. Failed strategy. It won't get us where we need to go. Okay. We need to unify, mobilize. We are all criminalized and mm -hmm. we're having our everything, you know, shut down. And more than ever to, you know, get the, the old failed strategies out of the way and figure out what works. You know, that's why, you know, I don't do the sex worker apologist uh, platform. I have a right to work. It doesn't matter why we work. That doesn't matter. That's like picking picking apart little details. It matters that we have a right to provide for ourselves, and we have a right to do this work. And you know, rallying around that is going to be a much you know more powerful strategy, especially in the courts. Um, and when we start using the language of labor labor rights to legislators, that's going to make much more sense to them. And I think they're going to be able to take action on that platform much better because the other platform, we do sex work because we're discriminated against or we're poor or this or that or addicted, that lends itself to the opposition. And we need to stop giving the opposition room in our movement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, I, totally, I totally agree with you, Al. It, you know, it's one of the reasons why I became an activist because I could see clearly that that narrative hadn't gone anywhere. It doesn't gain any social currency. It's got no ass attached to it, and it's 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 worthless. It doesn't do anything. You know, it doesn't. You know, the legislators don't even use that that uh, language. You know, the opposition you know, because, does. Oh. The oppo opposition uses it, uh, but then co-ops it. But how how many years you've seen for years, Maxine? You have been in this fight for a long time, and um, you have seen this that particular narrative used forever. And where has it gotten us? Nowhere. You know? 
It's like, and it, and it's that true. Is, it's a true it's thing. That's where it's gotten us. Say it again. It's gotten us kicked off line. That's yeah. where it's gotten us. Yeah, right. So figuring out what the, you know, and, and I think that's another reason why these non-workers, you know, they shouldn't be steering things. They don't understand. They are not in our position. They, you know, that would be like letting white people run Black Lives Matter. I mean, are you serious? I mean, we, we need people who are workers, you know, currently, um, you know, or have a very, in, a stake in it that yeah. um, are there and understand what it's like to be criminalized and live under threat of arrest every day and having everything, you know, yeah, you get it. <laughs> <clears throat> so please, uh, you know, donate to litigate to emancipate.com, um, you know, which is the fund. It'll be listed underneath. And, um, you know, the funds are used to, you know, fight this, you know, oppression and, um, you know, the, yeah, please make it to the meeting if you can. And I hope that I can be there on, on the phone. <laughs> yeah. So thank yeah. you, Maxine. See you kids. We'll talk to you soon, L. This has been Maxine. Do it again. Domina L. <laughs> Dominate the nation. Right on. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs>